All across North America are reports of a creature that's been given the name of the Dogman. Those who have reported the creature have described it as looking like a strange werewolf-like creature and seems to possess supernatural strength and abilities. Those who have come forward with their encounters have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast and at the centre of Skinwalker legends. Interestingly, for the last 60 years there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales, the majority of these stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first Dogman sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene, not wanting to stay and risk getting hurt by the large creature. Fast forward to 1961 and a security guard witnessed something similar in Big Rapids, Michigan. Most of the encounters with these creatures are just stories, and there's no way to back up what the individual saw. However, the security guard remembered that he had a camera on him, and was in fact able to snap a photograph of the large beast. Those who have analysed it say it matches other eyewitness descriptions of the Dogman. One of the issues with these types of stories is the lack of evidence to back them up, but now another photograph is making its way online allegedly showing the Dogman cryptid. It's hard to track down its origin, but the image was first seen on various groups on Facebook. The story goes that one night someone was looking through their trail camera that was pointed towards their garden. After a while, they could see something moving in the bushes towards the left side of the screen. Brushing it off as everyday wildlife, they didn't bother to look closer, as seeing nature in their back garden wasn't uncommon. However, after a few minutes, the individual noticed that whatever this thing was was taking up a lot of room. The animal soon left the scene, leaving the person confused with what they'd just seen. They then decided to download the video and brighten it on their computer. It was only after doing this that they discovered a large dog-like creature had been there the whole time, looking towards the house where the person had been watching the camera. Those who have seen the image have said it's one of the best pieces of evidence of the dogman creature. As of today, there's been various people who have come forward of their encounters with this mysterious beast. One person said the following about their encounter. I'm going to tell you a story of mine that I rarely tell. My own family don't even know about this, and while that may sound strange to you, trust me, it makes sense to tell internet strangers than people I'm forced to be around. This story has been told on YouTube before, but I want to clear up some confusion around it. This happened when I was much younger. I'd have to ask my parents when the camping trip happened to tell you how many years ago it was, but I can assure you it was at least a decade. Now I'm going to use some questionable words to describe the location. Words like wooded and wilderness reserve. Because I don't know the best words for this thing. Around a decade ago, a friend from church asked me to join his family on a camping trip to a wilderness reserve called Oasis State Park. Of course, since this was my best friend and his family had always been nice, I said yes. Up until that point, I'd only camped rarely so the prospect of camping with a friend and his family seemed absolutely amazing. So we began preparing for a weekend when I wasn't busy. I got my own tent, my own sleeping bag and my own supplies. Once all that was gathered, the father of the friend came and picked me up, and my parents waved me off. There's quite a few things I remember from that trip. The amazingly hostile yet beautiful New Mexico countryside, the high ground and the campsite, the New Mexican wilderness isn't something a lot of people fantasize about camping in, at least not as far as I know, but Oasis State Park is different. The camping plots are all nice even if the best ones are taken. There's a pretty lake, lots of wildlife and I have to admit more trees than I've ever seen in my town. I know nobody thinks of multitudes of trees when they think of New Mexico, and for good reason. They aren't the most common occurrence in the plains unless planted by people. Regardless, Oasis has enough for me to use the term woods. 
we found ourselves a plot and began setting up our tents. By the afternoon the tents were set and me and my friend ditched his boring younger sister in favour of exploring the park. The memories are fantastic. We found a snake by the lake and watched it drink from the water before slivering off quickly. We explored a place I remember was very sandy. We watched a roadrunner doing its thing. We played all day after lunch and saw so many amazing things by the end of the day. I never would have thought anything could go wrong. We finished the day like you always do, by collecting sticks and starting a fire to eat s'mores and tell ghost stories. None of the stories were scary, probably because me and my friend were kids and his sister was even younger. Shortly after the stories were said and s'mores were eaten we retired. Me to my tent and my friend his father and his sister to their tent. Now for this setup I'll explain the positioning. This is all going to be important. My tent was at one edge of the plot and my friend's tent was at the exact opposite. This was for privacy reasons. Now at my end of the plot was a mini trail that led through thick brush to the lake. Also around three feet from my tent was a little tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was but it was still young and small. The trail to the lake was to the left of my tent. The lake was behind it and a thin tree line sat across a trail in front of my tent. That trail in front of my tent led to the bathrooms. So I went to bed without a single bit of fear. And before I did I went ahead and urinated on the tree outside of my tent because of laziness. I didn't want to do a two minute walk to the bathrooms when nature's toilet was outside my tent. So I finished closing my tent for the night and climbed into my sleeping bag. I don't know how long I slept but I woke up to use the bathroom. Before I did this though I decided to grab my little lantern. I flipped on my LED lantern and unzipped the inner flap of my tent. As if that little nylon net could protect me from what I was about to see. Now I should mention that outside of cities in New Mexico it's quite common to hear coyotes howl. It's a nightly occurrence in camping. Even up in little village like Logan you can hear howls from your bedroom. It isn't so unnerving when you're in a house. But when you've got some flimsy nylon on walls to protect you and that's it. It isn't the most comforting sound. As I unzipped my tent flap I could hear a few howls. But they were distant and not worrying. What stunned me into stillness was a loud howl from the direction of the lake. About a yard from my tent. This howl was different though. It had the feel of a coyote howl. But it was deeper and lasted longer. I simply sat there petrified at what I'd heard. I wouldn't be able to guess at how long I sat there breathing hard with my fingers still grasping the zipper. But however long it may have been it was just long enough for the thing that made the hell to come up to my tent. Suddenly I heard the crunching of claws on dirt. And after that claws on the rocks that made our camping plots. Then I saw the largest shadow made by a living creature I'd ever seen. It lumbered heavily in the direction of the sparse tree line, where I assumed the other howling had come from. Before it got past the tree I urinated on it stopped. I realised only then that I was both lit like a candle and had not been trying to silence my heavy breathing. By then it was too late as the hulking thing lumbered over close to the tree and into the light of my lantern. As dim as the LED light was at that distance, it was just barely enough to make out details. I'd like to note a few very important details that stuck out to me as odd. It had roughly the fur colouring of a coyote, but that classic dogman head shape with tiny pointed ears too small to make sense. It also made strange noises as it lowered on all fours in front of my tent, popping sounds like joints rubbing together, as I can only imagine its knees busted out of their standing joints and fell into different joints to support it on all fours. It briefly ignored me. The breaths were similar to a dog's but longer and far deeper almost like a horse's. Then that thing turned to me and stared me straight into my eyes. Its eyes didn't glow. They didn't peer into my soul but they were unbelievably unnatural. Above all things I saw in those eyes I saw a predator. Have you ever been in a position where you made eye contact with a beast you know is stronger than you? 
something you know could just slaughter you, and you know it knows you know. Just looking for so long that I thought for sure I'd just be a bloody stain by the time anyone reached my tent. Screaming would do nothing, but despite every feeling in my gut, despite the dread of knowing it was a predator and I was prey, I didn't die. Instead it turned slowly, ever so slowly and just sprinted off into the woods. It just went into the night faster than it came. I have one personal friend who knows about what happened, and jokes that it was my wee that caused it to stall and then run away, or maybe it just wasn't hungry, or most improbable it just had enough morals not to kill a kid. I'll never really know. Needless to say, I didn't go to the bathroom. I just put my lantern away, closed up my tent flap and held it in all night. I don't remember sleeping that night. I might have, I might not. But if I did, it was dreamless. I do remember that I tried to hide the expression the next day, asking if my friend and his family heard any howling. While they did hear howling, they told me just to ignore it, thinking it was a coyote. I was encouraged to ignore it, as if I was a city kid who'd never heard a coyote howling before. The next day I stayed as close to my friends as possible while exploring, and had nearly forgotten about the encounter by lunch. Somehow the safety I had been feeling during the day put the beast out of my mind, until we found tracks in a sandy place. Coyote tracks. I think those tracks confirmed to me that it wasn't just a dream, and because of that I showed enough fear that night to convince my friend's family to let me sleep in their tent. Even in the comfort of a warmer tent and in the presence of a few adults, I couldn't sleep that night. I'd nearly drift into a sleep and then I'd hear a coyote howl. The next day I pretended to be sick, and got my mother to drive up and take me home a day or two early. It was the worst camping trip of my life. It ruined not only my whole summer, but it also ruined camping. I haven't been camping without a tent buddy since, and I don't plan to. Even then, I'm never comfortable. I'm always listening for strange noises and acting paranoid. This really messed me up. Being forced to see that a human which is at the top of the food chain is utterly powerless in front of such a beast. I don't think I can press hard enough to make everyone realise how powerless I felt. Even today when I think about this, I remember two things. Those eyes and that feeling. Just writing this sent multiple shivers up my spine. So what do you make of the dogman creature, and this photograph that was taken? Also, what do you think of this person's dogman story, and have you encountered anything similar? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.